This presentation is going to attempt to answer three questions. How do you design a game about design? How do you manage creative freedom in an ambitious educational project? And what is the future of learning through play? Hi, I'm Vin Su, founder and CEO of Press Start Academy and the lead designer of Divergence. And I'm here to share how you too can play like a designer. First, a lightning round of what's what and who's who. The Hong Kong Design Center is a nonprofit organization founded in 2001 with a public mission of using design and innovation to drive value creation in business and societal well being. The Institute of Design Knowledge is a division of the Hong Kong Design Center that curates and shares design knowledge and organizes design trainings to various industries and sectors. The IDK Design Thinking Toolkit is a wonderfully comprehensive set of free to download materials that the Institute of Design Knowledge has gone great lengths to curate and compile, to introduce the basics of design thinking and to empower individuals to think like a designer. Design thinking, to paraphrase the IDK Design Thinking Toolkit, is the methodology of creative problem solving with effective tools and processes that practitioners can use to identify problems, create new values, and arrive at solutions while remaining human-centered and empathetic. And over here at Press Start Academy, our team creates learning experiences that focus on developing 21st century skills like innovation and problem solving through play games. So, how do you design a game about design? Well, I guess it helps to have a little bit of understanding of the design process, specifically the design thinking process that the Hong Kong Design Center champions and evangelizes so much. Part of our team's understanding comes from having worked in the creative design and innovation fields, but most of it really comes from designing games and learning experiences on a daily basis. Our friends at the Hong Kong Design Center follow the double diamond model as proposed by the UK Design Council which features four distinct stages. Discover, define, develop, and deliver. In a nutshell, in the design thinking process, we start with a problem or an issue that we further discover and flesh out by understanding the people, the users, that the problem affects. This leads to a period of exploration where we explore different opportunities for us to tackle, to further define how we are able to serve our users. Then comes the ideation part, where we bring together different ideas and inspirations to develop different propositions in a creative and collaborative manner before we design a prototype for testing and deliver our call to action and our call to impact. Four stages that go through alternate rounds of divergent and convergent thinking to get the best out of our imagination and creativity. Hence, the double diamonds. If this sounds familiar and intuitive, that's because it is. My take on the design thinking process and why I think it's so powerful is not that it's some kind of genius equation that holds the key to innovation. It's that it simplifies and makes concrete and followable a process that many people might think is something that others are born with and thus inherently out of reach for them. Creative problem solving. By having a structured approach and formula, those of us traditionally labeled creative can bring others along the journey. And more importantly, those of us who don't consider themselves creative can actually practice creative problem solving too. Divergence is a fast paced storytelling game from the Hong Kong Design Center that helps creative teams unleash imagination, and grasp the design thinking process through a friendly round of gameplay. And it consists of four gameplay rounds because the design thinking process consists of four innovation stages. And the best way to learn through play is to play first, learn later. Okay, so it turns out that the design thinking process being comprised of four stages already already provides a pretty good foundation for us to build a game of four gameplay rounds around it. The next question, 
How do you manage creative freedom in an ambitious educational project? Well, it turns out that finding references and jumping off points is a pretty useful first step. One of the things that I think is the most important to get right in a game design and learning design project is setting constraints and working backwards. This involves identifying our learning outcomes, what our learners should be taken away from the whole experience, including debrief and discussion, understanding our immediate context, how many learners we're working with, how long we'll have with you, and what we might know or not know, and only after we have a good idea of both, creating our gameplay experience, how our learners can be primed and introduced as players, what kind of experience might be suitable, and what kinds of skills they should exhibit and practice. I've already gone through the basics of design thinking, so that's step one, done. Step two, was something that the Hong Kong Design Center was able to provide guidance to us on. And we enjoyed a few rounds of discussion to define what that should look like for this project. But step three, now that was up to us to explore and create for ourselves. It's rare to come across a project in which you have almost complete creative freedom. In our case, it was creative freedom not only in terms of game design, but also in the learning, curriculum, and facilitation design. This was a dream come true, a real privilege and exciting opportunity to flex our muscles and bring our experience in this area, but also a testament to the trust that our friends at the Hong Kong Design Center had in our process. Setting our own boundaries was no easy task, but we found solace in having our learning outcomes as our North Star. Four design thinking stages, four gameplay rounds, Empathy as the cornerstone of discovery. Let's have our first round centered around getting to know our users. Exploring opportunities as the foundation of define. Let's mix and match opportunities using real world references. Creative ideation as the crux of develop. Let's flesh out our ideas and envision what might be possible. Impact assessment as the core to develop. Let's add a little spice and see how well our players articulate their visions and tell their story. This culminates in a pretty neat synopsis of the four gameplay rounds of Divergence, which, and this is a blessing to all of us facilitators out there, can be presented in one single slide. Round one, build your character. We will work together to create a character as a team using a combination of different prompts. Round two, mix match. We will compete to bid for components with which to mix and match different innovation opportunities. Round three, pre-pitch. We will put these components together and design as many solutions as we can to help the character. Round four, final pitch. We will elevator pitch our best ideas to be judged by each other and earn points. There's one facilitation slide that bridges the end of the game and the beginning of the debrief. It says, first things first, we've all just practiced design thinking. This is when our players transition into being our learners. And it's the process of play that allows that transition. Play first, learn later. That's the future of learning through play. We work a lot with schools and educators who come to us with one central question in their minds. How do I make a learning unit fun? And how expensive is it going to be? What they have in mind is a $1 million VR experience for one unit of history, a mobile app to teach geography, or a computer game simulating evolution. Sure. That's ambitious and cool. But in a school setting where funds are limited, we find that our most frequent response is, you can do all this for a fraction of the price if you start with the impact of your learning outcomes rather than the novelty of the experience. The future of learning through play is simple. How do you structure the learning so your learners get what they need out of it? And how do you build the play? 
sort of players transition into being learners. Amid the talk of player agency and student agency, maybe it's time to shed light also on teacher agency or designer agency. We know best what should be delivered, and our building blocks and inspirations are everywhere around us, as long as we care to look. That's the spirit of design, and that's the spirit of play. Divergence is one of the most meaningful projects I've ever had the pleasure of working on. Not just because we got to collaborate with a forward-thinking team at the Hong Kong Design Center. Not just because we enjoyed a high degree of creative freedom, but because of the statement it makes. Here is an analog toolkit that can allow you to learn and experience design thinking that you can access for free through the Institute of Design Knowledge's online repository. Here is a learning experience that can be used not just in corporate and strategy settings, but in social innovation with NGOs, in educational institutions with teachers and students, in hospitals with healthcare workers and service designers. Here's a game for change that is an embodiment of the back to basics future of learning through play by letting you play like a designer.